Hey all YouTube. In today's video we're going to be experimenting with Magic Eraser. Now, this is obviously known as Magic Eraser in the United States. Over here it's known under a couple of different names, but uh, anyways. It's one of these typical white sponges that you can use to erase all kinds of weird staining from uh, all kinds of surfaces. This right here is an iBook G4, and these are notorious for getting scratched up pretty badly, just like the uh, white Intel MacBooks that replaced them. And as you can see, this one is feeling a little bit sorry for itself. In terms of scratching, it's not all that bad. It's still pretty glossy, but overall it is pretty dirty and pretty scratched up. So what I'm going to do first is, first I'm going to uh, use a little cloth and just, you know, get the majority of the grime off. And then we'll give this a go and see if we can uh, smooth out the uh, lid here a little bit. And then we'll uh, take a look around the other parts of the machine as well. The bottom wiped it down with a wet cloth. It is definitely a bit shinier now. But we still have these weird black marks here. So, uh... Alright, so that was round one of uh, polishing the surface a little bit. From what I can see, it's uh, you know it it it, def it feels a little bit smoother, I have to say. So that's nice. Here you can see it is definitely a scuffed up machine. But it feels smoother, that's for sure. Here's what the back looks like. By the little light source, you can tell how scratched up it really is. It's definitely cleaner than it was before. It's hard to pick up on camera, but it did have some horrible black stains here and there. And those are mostly gone now. I guess the biggest difference was on the top here because the, the lid was definitely filled with some pretty horrible marks. There's just some debris on there now, and that's basically all there is to it. So it's definitely looking a little bit better, so it's somewhat of a result, I guess. Yeah, I'm gonna get some paper to dry this off a little bit. Should probably also dry off the display just a little bit. Definitely went over everything here, so I don't want any moisture seeping into the display. No lens cleaner, no eucalyptus oil here. There we go. Well, that's a clean looking display right there. So definitely a much cleaner machine overall. Alright, so I guess we have to find out if it still works. Because I haven't powered this machine on in a long time, so uh, that should be interesting. So uh, yeah, let's plug it in. And there we go. It's also whisper quiet. My 
actually not sure if I actually replaced the hard drive in this or whether I actually fit an SSD. It's been a long time since I've used this iBook. I think the last time I properly used this was when I actually did a video on restoring this to its original state by using the original restore disk that came with the machine. Let's see what version we're running here. I guess I did the clean and reinstall later because this is uh, Tiger. So this is a 1.2 gigahertz model with 1.25 gigs of RAM. So we have one gigabyte of RAM uh, underneath the keyboard and 256 megabytes built in. All of the iBook models came with 256, uh, at least the later G4 models with 1 gigahertz and newer. And uh, they were upgradable to 140 gigabytes. The very last version, the mid-2005, I think it was, it came with 512 on board and could be upgraded to a gig and a half. That's overall a much uh, quicker machine than this, more powerful. Let's see if we can connect to Wi-Fi here, because that would be swell. It's not picking up any networks. I guess that's because it's, it thinks it's 1970, and there wasn't any Wi-Fi in 1970 yet. But, uh, yeah. The machine appears to be running just fine. Let's check the disk that's in this. Okay, it's definitely still a spinning disk. This is a 60 gigabyte Fujitsu drive. I think this originally had a 30 gig. So this is a good upgrade for that. But it's a whisper card drive, and it's pretty zippy, honestly. Let's uh, open up Microsoft Office here, which is a notoriously heavy program on older Macs. There we go. This is version 2004, I think. So yeah, but that's way out of the scope of this video. I just wanted to uh, clean it up a little bit and give it another test. Now that we know the machine is still working properly, in fact, even the battery is still charging, we can be sure that the machine is still in good working condition, at least technically. And optically it has improved a little bit as well. The display is nice and clean, the keyboard is nice and clean, the palm rests are very clean. And uh, we've cleaned up the top and the bottom a little bit as well. So I think this machine is uh, good to go for another lease on life. Definitely need to do some more with this machine. I absolutely love these old iBooks. I think I want to trek down a 14 inch uh, 2005 model. If you have one of those and you live in Europe, definitely hit me up. You might be able to figure out a deal because I'm definitely looking for one of those. Doesn't matter if the battery is shot or if it doesn't come with a charger. I have those, no biggie. Uh, it would be preferable if the keyboard is working and if the machine is otherwise in working condition. So uh, I can make a video about it and uh, have some fun with it. So uh, yeah, definitely hit me up if you get one of those. For now, I'm gonna leave this machine as is. I do want to get another keyboard for it because this uh, iBook G3 keyboard is absolutely atrocious. The space bar doesn't click quite right on this side of the keyboard. The keyboard doesn't quite have the feel that uh, the iBook keyboard does. Those chiclets are a little bit uh, lighter in terms of their key press than these. These are a bit heavier and a bit thicker. Definitely prefer the uh, real iBook G4 ones, the, the opaque ones. But uh, yeah, I'll track one down one of those on eBay, I guess. Because uh, back when I owned my first iBook G4, these keyboards were actually very easy to find. And now they're not anymore, so. Just a couple of days after I shot that last clip, uh, the keyboard actually showed up. So uh, yeah, I ordered this from eBay. This was two dollars. Shipping was a bit more expensive; it was about ten bucks or so. But uh, this is an official U.S. layout iBook G4 keyboard, and uh, for two dollars, it's really in really good shape. No worn keys. They're all very matte still, or opaque, however you want to look at it. Definitely a lot better than the. Uh, Absolutely awful translucent G3 keyboard. So yeah. Definitely uh, looking forward to getting this in here. And uh, these G G4s really aren't all that complicated to get the keyboard out. You have to pull these two tabs if the locking pin is not enabled. In this case it is. So I'll just need a small flat blade screwdriver. 
course, we have I Fix It to the rescue. Put that over there. Let's see our assortment. Which one should be? It's a fairly small one. All right. Yep, that's unlocked now. Excellent. Generally, should just pull up like that. There we go. You can also see the huge issue with the uh, ribbon cable over there. Right, something else I need to address is the fact that it does not get any airport, or in this case, uh, obviously known as wireless uh, reception. So we'll also inspect the airport card in a bit. First of all, let's remove the screws that hold this tray in. Couple of small screws. I don't happen to have all of the screws in here anymore. It's just something that happens with all the laptops. At some point, you just start losing screws. Right, so let's remove the airport antenna here. Just a simple pull. Now we need to remove the airport card before we can remove the tray. This is a little finicky, there's a plastic tab. It's always routed underneath the little bar there that, uh, that you can use to pull the tray out. Just pull up the airport card like so. There we go, airport extreme. Extreme 54 megabit connection, oh yeah. Spread that around the cable. Here is the RAM slot on the iBook G4, currently populated with the maximum capacity, 1 gigabyte. Keyword is just straight pull. No magic there. Oh god, that thing sticks so bad. Let's compare it to the new one. This one doesn't actually smell of anything. It shouldn't, so that's good. Or I've just in. in Advertently gotten myself a coronavirus here because it's from Italy. Ah, that's all that's that's all behind us at this point. You know, when you're not directly above it, it's always a bit finicky. Anyway. Right, so the keyboard ribbon is now in. Let's see if it fits. Yeah, it does. The rest of the machine is ever so slightly more yellowed than the keyboard is, so it looks a bit newer. It's factory fresh. All right, so let's do this all in reverse. Make sure the ribbon cable is now nicely clamped down without ripping it in any way. Now is a good moment to screw the tray back on and then we'll move on to the airport card again. There we go. I will say that the amount of screws that I actively strip on these older Macs is definitely a lot lower than before I had this iFixit kit. Because I never had the exact bits that you needed for some of these machines. Because some will need a Phillips double zero, some will need just a single zero, some need ever so slightly smaller or, or bigger or whatever. It's insane how many kinds of Phillips head screws there are. I don't even get me started on Torx. I never had any Torx screwdrivers. At some point at a local DIY store, I just happened to uh, come across one. A little set of uh, Torx screwdrivers. And that was fine, I guess. Okay, let's get the antenna on. It's definitely secured in there. Now we need to secure the airport card. Should slide in. 
All right, now we're actually, we have it behind this little bar again. Might want you to just ever so slightly push that plastic tab underneath there again. I don't think we can route this thing underneath. Oh, we can. Good. Okay, excellent. Sorry about the view, guys. This is always kind of finicky. In fact, I really need to see what I'm doing here. There we go. Now it actually clicks. I think that was the issue with this airport card. It didn't actually properly click in as such. Move the cable around a little bit. All right, that should do it. Bend it into paper so slightly. Some keys might have been dislodged during shipping. Even the key feel is so much better, actually. These feel better than the T3 ones. All right. Just going through my screw bits again. Make sure we lock the keyboard in its locked position. Yep, that's definitely locked now. Excellent. And we'll boot it back up again into your Mac OS 10. Let's see if we can find wireless networks. Yes, we can. Excellent. Okay. So we fixed airport. That's good. It's a nice bonus. Our battery is charged 88% and charging. So that's still holding a charge at the moment. It's also good. Should have another spare battery for this thing somewhere. So let's find out if our keyboard is working properly. Opening a Word document, and you will do. Right, let's start at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there we go. Space is working. Caps lock is definitely working. All right. Shift is working fine. Yep, button control is working. Brightness control is working as well. Num lock is working. Excellent. Yep, the eject key is working. Yep, tab is working as well. Control and alt keys are working. Command is working as well. Oh, well, everything appears to be in order. Yep. Great. Keyboard is working just fine. And finally, this machine looks somewhat natural again. It's really hard to tell on the video because, uh, yeah, the machine is a bit yellowed and the lighting isn't amazing. But this keyboard is ever so slightly whiter than the rest of the machine, which is pretty cool. So yeah, basically a brand new iBook G4 keyboard with US layout for just $2 imported from Italy. Well, it took about three days or four days, I think. Yeah, it was about three days to get here, three working days at least. So that's pretty quick. So uh, awesome. So this machine finally got some love that it deserved. We uh, slightly smoothened out the edges or the scratches on the lid and on the bottom and replaced the keyboard as a total surprise for this video, which was not really as an, in an intended uh, part of it, but you know, great bonus. Hope you enjoyed it. I thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in a future video.